Welcome to this educational module. We would like to share some practical tips to help you move better. This is part two of the bed mobility series. And in this video, we're gonna talk about getting in and out of bed. So how do you get in and out of bed a little bit easier? Well, there's one way of doing it, and that is with using good body mechanics. It's how you position your body so that you're able to move with less difficulty. Another way of doing it is by putting more effort into your movements so you recruit more of your muscle fibers that tend to be sleeping a little bit, and then it gives you a little more strength to help you make your movements more effectively. When people tell me they have difficulty with bed mobility, I ask them to show me how it is that they're getting in and out of bed because that tells a lot as far as if it's primarily their body mechanics or not. There's a lot of reasons why you can have trouble getting in and out of bed, but the emphasis in this video is on body mechanics. I first want to review what I see people do that make it harder for them to move in bed. Then what I want to do is review proper body mechanics and how you can move more easily. So here's a situation where an individual is getting into bed using this method and usually they use this method because the bed is too high. And what happens is you roll into bed, but as you're rolling into bed, you don't have much control over that movement typically, and you kind of plop down. Then you need to readjust yourself so that you're in the spot you really want to be in your bed. So it's a lot of extra work once you're plopped down. Over time, this becomes a progressively more difficult thing to maneuver once you're laying down and more difficult to control. One thing you can do is lower your bed and you can refer to bed mobility part one in terms of options on how to do that. In this situation, it's very common for people to get in and out of bed like this, but it's very inefficient. So you're reaching back with your one arm and then you're swinging both your legs into the bed and then you're suspended up there and then you lay flat down. And oftentimes you'll end up laying on a diagonal and how many times have you heard this from your spouse? You're laying on a diagonal. So this is not an optimal way of getting into bed because now you have to again straighten yourself out. This is a video showing this method. So as you can see, he's, he's got to scoot around. He has to lift his whole leg up using his hip muscles. And then if, if he has tight hamstrings in the back, it makes it hard to sit up and have your knees straight. And there you have it. So a lot of work getting those legs in there and then you're still not in the best position. The reason it's so hard to stay up sitting when you're in a long sitting position is because if you have tight hamstrings, then they're pulling your pelvis into a posterior direction, which is in essence forcing you to lay down. So in order to counteract that, you have to use your arm muscles, you need to have shoulder flexibility, you need to have abdominal strength and wrist flexibility in order to counteract that to have a controlled lying down position. Now that you've seen the inefficient way of getting into bed, I hope you have a greater appreciation on how to use proper body mechanics laying down. And what we're gonna do is have gravity help us laying down so we don't have to use all this effort. So you're gonna scoot back into the bed and then you're gonna let gravity pull you down onto your side. Then in the second picture here, you see the thighs are fully supported on the bed and all you have to do is swing your feet in. So you don't have to use your hip muscles in order to get your legs into the bed. And then once your feet are up above the mattress, then you just slide them back. Very simple. This slide has two videos. One shows you how to lay down onto your side and get your feet into the bed. And then the second one shows you how to roll onto your back and then scoot into the bed if you're still too far to the edge. 
when you're getting into bed, it's best to get in on your side, and then that way you won't end up on a diagonal in the bed. And how you do this, you first lean onto your right elbow, and then you put your other hand past that, and then drop your shoulder down, and then bring your feet in, just like that. When you initially lay down on your side and you find that you're too far still yet to the edge of the bed, one thing you can do is try and roll on your back using the weight of your arm. So you bring your arm behind you and the weight of your arm can help you with rolling onto your back. From there, you lift up your butt. It's like a bridge and you scoot to the left. Now you move your feet to the left a little bit and then lift up your butt and scoot to the left and then move your feet. And you do that as often as you need to to get yourself more centered into the bed. Next, we're gonna talk about rolling. And there's two ways to roll onto your side. In this picture, it shows that you're reaching with your arm and you're reaching with your leg. And the weight of your leg will help you roll onto your side. The other hand that's already on the side of the mattress can help pull you onto your side as well. So here's a video to show you how this works. And here's your second method of rolling. Instead of reaching with your leg, you're gonna dig your heel into the bed to assist you in your roll. Now, whatever method of rolling you decide to use, you always wanna have your hand out to the side by the edge of the bed, that bottom hand that you see over here so that when you do roll, you don't end up laying on that arm and then you can't do anything with it. Let me just show you a video. So now we need to finish the roll. And that top arm that was reaching over is now hooked onto the side of the bed and it's pulling to make sure that this top shoulder here rolls forward a little bit more because if you have your top shoulder going back then it's going to roll you back onto your back so you want to make sure that top shoulder is forward a bit now that you're lying on your side we're going to get up from the bed and getting up from the bed is the exact reverse process as you did when you laid down so when you get up the first thing that comes out of the bed are your feet you don't know how many times I've seen people get up and they start getting their shoulders up and they haven't gotten their feet out yet. So they're just making it harder on themselves. So when you get up from the bed, the feet come out first. So you just slide your feet off the edge of the bed and gravity will bring your feet down. And then you're gonna push with your hands, pushing yourself up into a sitting position. And lastly, where you put your hands when you're getting up can make a difference in terms of the level of difficulty. So I usually have told my patients in the past that if they can't see their hands when they're getting up, your hands are in the wrong spot. So these are two videos that I'm gonna show you. One is somebody getting up with their hand behind them and then uh, the next video shows the hand, both hands in front. You will see a strong reliance on his right elbow and his left hand is basically not doing a whole lot other than coming around. So in this next video, you're gonna see him rely on both of his hands equally. So the left hand is helping him get up instead of just coming around. push him with his elbow and his hand so he can distribute that effort. So in summary, if you're having trouble moving in bed, evaluate how you're moving in bed because we've been getting in and out of bed our whole lives and we don't think about it at all as far as what we're doing. So be deliberate and analyze how you're getting in and out and what areas you're having trouble with and possibly why. Then think about the body mechanics that you saw in today's video and see how much you're deviating from that and what things you can change so that it's easier for you. 
And I didn't mention this enough in this video, but it really tried to exaggerate your movements if you're having problems. Really bring that arm around with more effort, make it a bigger motion so that momentum can also help you come around in addition to getting those extra little muscle fibers activated. And then lastly, once people know what to do, it feels awkward to them. So the best thing to do is to practice it until it does feel natural and then you're more inclined to use it on a regular basis and be more successful. If you want to see more videos like this one, you can go to YouTube and enter Mia Bolin and click the search button, or you can go to my website at parkinsonspt.com. Thank you.